I do on occasion dive into the red triangle in California to test watches. I ain't gonna lie, it's a little bit freaky for me. I mean, there's currents to deal with, things swimming by, I'm all alone, and it's cold. Yeah, until you pee yourself for a little warm urine pocket of joy. <laughs> Did you notice the part where I said I'm all alone? Mm -hmm. That's because Tactical Doodle, even though he and I certified yeah. together, refuses to go, wait for it, scuba diving with me. Dude, I, it's just, that's where all the spooky shit lives. <laughs> he will not do it. He refuses. So, uh, yeah, I go once in a while. I, you know, if I lived in California, I'd be diving all the time. Well, that's... Surfing and diving. I'm either I need mountains or water. Oh, by the way, this is a watch review. We'll get to the details of this sucker right here. Just a sec. What were in, you gonna say? In my defense, you, <sighs> only in Cali, and it is frigid. It I is agree. so freaking cold. I agree. If that, we like, no, if we were closer yeah. to the East Coast, I'd be a lot more. You know, I'd go mix it up with the squid and the weird tentacle things. I that would be cool. But, well, you don't oof. even need a wetsuit down down in Florida and stuff. You yeah. Can just, you know, sometimes you'll have like a lycra suit for jellyfish and stuff. That's why you should dive with down there. Yeah. But you're right. In California, the water, I think last time we dove in Monterey, uh, <clears throat> correction, last time I dove in Monterey, it was like probably 54 degrees. Dude, I was topside and I was degrees. still shivering. <laughs> Remember my footage on my first outing? I had the thinner wetsuit. I was yeah. literally shaking. Sorry, I'm coughing. I'm working a cold. The show goes on. It is what it is. On the tabletop, we have a really cool knife. This is a Kaiser Vanguard, Chinese produced. I think this is D2, is that right? No, VG10, the other one is, I, I was thinking of the other one. Look at the price on that though, $52. I got this one off Amazon, <laughs> such a great knife. I think I have reviewed this one right here. Uh, we got one of Dad's T38 patches sitting uh, beneath the TVCA. Uh, new patches, perhaps, at fancybigcartel.com. We're working on an maybe. idea. Maybe, maybe. Just click there once in a while, see what's going on. Walter PPKS22. That's a Fort Smith, Arkansas produce, uh, produced one. We reviewed that in the bunker just recently. And we've got uh, AK47 by Cold Steel. And then these two things go together. TD's with me for this WRV. All right, so this is the Reactor Poseidon. It has been discontinued. However, you can go on the secondary market and find it. We found that the prices now are kind of all over the map. This version it was my favorite. I actually hunted for this for a long time. I saw it in Amazon, and I think I have a screenshot of that. And it was selling for like $900. <clears throat> and it's a quartz watch. So that was too expensive for me, and I just kept watching the secondary market. And then about two years ago, I found this for about half price. So I paid for about 400, 425 for it in eBay. That's where I got this watch. And it had a little bit of use on it, but I don't care. Yeah, I, I kind of prefer it. I don't mind a used watch. Like I always say, I just don't want this crystal all scratched up. Yeah. This does have a mineral crystal on it. And now it is wearing my armor shield or armor suit protective material. So it'll be good to go. So here we go. Big, cool, super cool dive watch. Uh, TD, you're pretty enthusiastic about this one, are you not? Yeah. He likes it a lot. I always like when they use different indices from standard manufacturing. It seems like a lot of manufacturers just pull them off the rack and they go, ah, this is a three, here's an I, ah, slap it on. This thing has a ton of personality. Yeah. And that's where I, it really kind of starts and begins with the reactor Poseidon right there. Uh, ideally, we would have reviewed it two years ago, but the flow is what it is here. Yeah. We got lots of content coming out. But here you go. Better late than never. Uh, it really is a cool looking watch. I'm going to start off with something negative, though, and it, it I think it's very deserved. I talked about it in some other reviews, like the Momentum M50, and that is it suffers from the small face syndrome. Mark, mark. So you have a really big case. The dimensions are actually 48 millimeters across right here. I'm not counting the... The, you know, this right here, the crown. And then this uh, actually controls your inner chapter ring. We'll talk about that. It's 19 millimeters in thickness. Chunky. It's 57 millimeters lug to lug. If you're rocking anything like a six something inch wrist, I don't think this is going to work on you. Do you? Mm -hmm. What's your wrist diameter? Do you know? I don't know. 
Probably like a, a little bit, maybe seven is what I guess on you. It's kind of slender. <clears throat> I'll have you put this on and we'll see if it works for you. Uh, and incidentally, one reason I went hunting for this watch is because I wanted to get a titanium dive watch. I was thinking, well, maybe, you know, it'd be lighter weight. It'll have that cool, you know, kind of bulky dive look to it that a lot of us like. Um, and this is, of course, titanium. We have dove this, uh, the SD card that had the footage on it, died. Awesome. Awesome. It does happen. So uh, it worked great, of course. No big deal. And that's when I was attacked by a six-inch sand shark. Yep. Totally that, happened. That thing had... Dude, it went after me. It was mutated, too. <clears throat> yeah, he was pissed. It had three sets of fins. <laughs> and it had one of those the inner mouths like the alien <clears throat> does. So when he opened yeah. his main mouth, a smaller mouth came out. <laughs> and it had, like, pneumatic power behind it so it could punch through skulls. It was terrifying. <clears throat> I'm looking for our shark patch. Sorry, I'm still coughing. There it is. So, yeah, it's a mutated sand shark. Yep, with a jetpack, just like that. <laughs> he did remark about the watch, which is unusual. Yeah. He's like, hey, okay, that's a pretty cool watch. Yeah. Meanwhile, you and your mother were topside enjoying a cold beverage <sighs> while Still dad was nice. underwater in the cold ocean testing watches. By the way, that part's not made up. It's not. He is topside with mommy. Totally. Yeah, so titanium dive watch is going to show some wear and tear on the case. <clears throat> that's kind of cool, though. Yeah. To some people, that's not cool. Uh, 316L stainless steel will be a lot more durable. I'm rocking a Deep Blue Master 1000 compatible option. This has kind of a kettle stainless steel case. I have not dove this particular one, so it's nice and pristine. But that's going to be a more durable material than titanium. Yeah. That being said, having a titanium case and a titanium strap, yes, it's taken off the watch. We'll discuss that. It's pretty cool. So it's 100% titanium. I think that's what kind of drove to the cost of this watch when it came out. And they did have some other <coughs> funky versions. Like you can see some going on the market for like 1200 bucks, a thousand. It's like ionized titanium. Interesting. So they have some did funky variations out there. That'll kind of affect the price. So if you look and see a real wide range, you may see them like 200 bucks. You may mm -hmm. see them 500. Just depends on the color combo and the odd materials. It is astonishing to see how much a bracelet will add in cost to a watch yeah especially if it's titanium you're talking like 200 bucks additional and remember usually i live at the value watch price point 300 or less i'm bouncing a little bit out of that oh but wait no i'm not because now it's a used watch and you can get this for less than 300 dollars. TV. Yeah. you just searched it out didn't you yeah just and, about and what'd you see it being sold, sold for right now about. maybe not this version but other versions of the poseidon uh the average is about 300 uh, depending on the color, if you see some like yellow, three hundred, uh, titanium, silver, four seventy, uh, two ninety, five hundred. It just depends entirely. Yeah, like, do you want all one black and map, red? Like do you said. want one pure titanium? Do you want it polished? All these mm -hmm. kinds of things kind of add up. And I think it's not so much the value of that knife. It's is that the color combo that of some other bidder is really excited about. I'm gonna start off on the back, <clears throat> and I talked about. On a, like the Momentum M50, how plain Jane their back was, and it was. It yeah. was embarrassing. This is how you do a back. I mean, so the theme on this is, I guess, nuclear, right? I guess. So you, I mean, that's reactor, yeah. right? They build these big, tough, kind of, with able to stand the zombie apocalypse, nuke war type watches. Kind of modern-y looking, unlike most yeah. divers. I don't mind that at all. I'm not criticizing yeah. at all. I think Part it's of their very design cool. language. And I like that about Ra Reactor, that they have a design language and they stick to it. And you see it here in the case back. That is a serious case back. Now, notice it's not a standard screw-in case back. You're going to have to have a some tool. Uh, you know, you might be able to actually adjust your standard case back you tool totally to could. interface with that. That probably yeah. would work. But that, you know, it looks like a nuclear reactor here. Uh, this thing is uh, waterproof to 10,000 miles. Did you know that? That sounds pretty realistic. 10,000 miles. No, it's 1,000 meters, I think, is what they, they say. As if. Yeah, there you go. You can see it on the face. 1,000 meter. Because that's going to be someone's primary timekeeping device at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> or dive device. I've talked about this multiple yeah. times. Guys, uh, professional divers, even serious recreational divers, don't dive with this, unless they're just using it for interval timing at the surface. Yeah. Uh, they're di they're diving a computer. They can. If they're a uh, watch enthusiast, I could see that. If they're into it and they like the... On the other wrist. The fun of... On the other oh, wrist. Back in the day, they used to have the Comex divers. I, I do it. My, my deep sea Omega. Right. 
Right, but I, it's on the other wrist, and I have my real dive computer with alarms and dwell times and everything going. I can run a Sunto, you guys have seen. Okay, so that's the case back. Uh, it looks, what are you going to say? There's something on that case back I wanted to point out. Say Let's it. Let's see if anyone can pick it. What kind of movement is this? Do, 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 do. Japanese, I would say. According to the back, it's a Japan automatic movement. Oh, yeah. That got me I for forgot. a loop. Cause I, I forgot that yeah. that was on there. And this is a quartz watch. So yep. this is, it's almost like a double print on like a nickel. I wonder if that makes this more collectible. Or they just didn't <laughs> want to buy a separate case back for this version. Hmm, that's quartz. interesting. I forgot that was on there. Uh, look how beat up that is, by the way. That looks amazing. So again, the case is its own statement of masculinity. That's uh, one reason why we really like it. It's so different and so dominating on other dive watches. It's pretty sick. There's no freaking spring bars. Instead, uh, you have spring, uh, or I'll call them strap bars. <laughs> Which are awesome. And they are so strong. I mean, this is really put together as a serious dive watch. That's my overall take. That I mean, and it normally attaches this titanium bracelet. We'll look at here in a, deta in, a in detail. We have ran this before, so it'll go on here. But now I'm just using it for a NATO strap, and it just functions with Allen head screws. So you, it's going to be a titanium sleeve. I think that's a hundred percent titanium all the way through on that. And then look at the cool detailing of the reactor logo on your crown, which is at the four o'clock position. Totally screw down, of course. And it, since it's thousand meter capable, it has fifteen gaskets on it. Sweet. Kidding. Kidding. But there's probably two or three gaskets on there. And then again, this rotates your inner chapter ring. Very cool. That's probably my oh favorite my feature. Gosh. The bezel is fantastic on this thing. It just, oh my gosh. It rotates very cleanly, precisely. We didn't get any sand in it when we dove it. It's a serious dive bezel. And it's got big old chunks on it so you can grab it with dive gloves. There's no occlusions going on. Sometimes you'll see a recess recessing on some dive watches. The Master 1000 doesn't have it. I love the bezel on the Master 1000. It's fantastic. And there's loom on the ring <clears throat> itself. Let's Oh dude, we got to show them the loom. nearly enough. I'll charge it up. The loom on this is called uh, Never Dark Technology Loom. Yeah. The loom is insane though. I actually love it. Like you said, there's a big triangle pip at the 12 o'clock position on the bezel. The numerals light up nicely. There's good loom on the hour's hand, the minute's hand, and the second's hand. Uh, the loom is a total win. What's not a total win, however, is the day-date window, which has become misaligned uh -oh. as we've used it over time. You'll see the date doesn't quite match up. We have tried to fix that. This is what you find out in a long-term test of a watch. Not a big deal, you know, we're not gonna throw the watch out. I guess we could send it back for service, but I don't think we care that much, do we? Yeah, not a whole lot. It is legible though, and it is day-date, which is sometimes hard to find on a dive watch. I love that about the Poseidon. And it's got Spanish. It does have Spanish, a lot of them have that though. Yeah. It's pretty normal. I'm sure at some point someone's gonna put French or German into there and now French or German. A French version. Uh, the Now the actual hands, the hours hand, uh, the minutes hand, they have triangle tips on them. I'm kind of a snob when it comes to hands. I like them to be just so. So here's a spinnaker wreck. This is a good representation. Uh, of, and this is an NH35 Seiko movement here. This is reviewed. I love this watch. It's fantastic. Yeah, it comes with a leather strap. It's kind of a desk diver, stylish diver. But this is a almost a perfect minutes hand for me if you're going to do a triangle on the end of it. And then you have some variants with hours hand. Uh, here, well, here comes my mini rant. We have the small face syndrome going on here with the Poseidon. So the effective face, and I'm talking that portion where the hour or the you know the time hands are actually rotating is really relatively small. Uh, there is a good reason for it, and that's one reason I'm able to forgive it on this watch is because demo this TD the movable inner chapter ring. So you have actually two ways to time things. <coughs> now you'll see that that knob right there, again, this is waterproof supposedly to a thousand meters. No, I'll never test it. But this is a bi-directional timing ring and you like that bi-directional. Love it. The, the bezel is unidirectional. So that's really cool. So you can actually do two intervals if you want. Uh, I like it. Love it. So I'm willing to forgive the small face syndrome on this dive watch because of that.
Okay, and here comes the bracelet. Now, I will say this thing with the titanium bracelet on it is a chunky watch at 6.2 ounces. <laughs> and that's with titanium. That's with titanium. Now, this is a high quality bracelet. It took me a little bit to size it to me. It is double clasped. You have the logo here. Very cool. Shown some wear and tear, which makes it even cooler. There is a dive extension on this too, I believe, right here. Kind of handy with the Can little you pins. Pop that up. No. Oh, is that the type you just pull on? There it is, right oh, okay. there. So that's for a wetsuit extension, right here. Handy. Nice bracelet. Nice clasp. It did not come undone in dive operations. Uh, I will say this though: I don't like diving with bracelets. I just don't. It's just uh, because the sizing differs so much on whatever wetsuit I'm wearing. I just assume run a silicone strap. Really high quality though, titanium bracelet. This is I, what it would look like on here. I cannot hate titanium bracelets anymore. Really? They look good for about mm, six days. Uh, and this becomes yeah. super scratched, super mm -hmm. destroyed. Each one of these links has like a buffed, burnished scratch. It just makes the, like I don't mind some wear, but there's a limit to wear that looks bad and titanium bracelets maybe if they were to seal it or something it could protect it but it never well, looks good when i bought this though i kind of knew what i was getting into and that is the wear and tear of titanium whether it's on mm -hmm. the case or the band you're going to get some thumping going on uh you know whatever i don't i'm, I'm less concerned about that I but i found out that it's sharper edges were not that comfortable mm. and that there was some hair grabbing going on and and then your wrist is automatically, I shouldn't say automatically, but continuously expanding and contracting. And a bracelet just doesn't adapt to that too readily. You do have some micro adjustments here that you could do. But I ran it for like a year and then I was like, you know, this is a little bit uncomfortable. And so now I just run a plethora of NATO straps. So I've got an orange and black. This is actually a lightweight and kind of cheesy Zulu strap. But I really like the orange and black color. What do you think? But you can't beat NATO straps, really. This they, is a Zulu. They dry out. They're damn near disposable. You can Agree. Have as many variations Agree. as you want. They're low profile, Here, infinitely adjustable. Here's a black NATO. So that would totally work on the side. We're going to do a little strap exercise here. So hold it up to the... I'm gonna, I just have a thing for getting the right colors on a strap. It's just a thing of what... We're not going to put each one on, but we're just going to hold it. Otherwise, the video will go too long. So black would work, don't you think? It would make that orange pop. Here comes a super high quality, bought off Amazon. Links below. That's a thick Zulu strap. Put that on. That works totally. And then this has the frosted stainless steel hardware on it, which would really match with a titanium case. That would work. Now you're talking a very comfortable, breathable watch strap for a big watch. And let me make another point while we're here. And I'm going to thread this up to show you. And this is important. When you have such a big watch like this, another reason I like the Zulu single strap, like this Zulu straps, is because watch what the strap does as it comes over your wrist. It actually loops over the bars and creates this dynamic. If you get a two-piece strap, it kind of comes vertically down and it straps it. You really have to kind of crank on it. I find with Zulu straps like this, you don't have to crank on them too much. And doesn't that help with retention if you have one of the bars snap off? The, the NATO does. Yeah. The NATO does, not this. And so that black NATO, this has retention. Uh, I don't, here, I have a NATO on my Apple Watch right now. So if one of the spring bars, rare on an Apple Watch, if it happened, though, it would retain the watch. It depends so, on the spring bars you got on the Apple Watch. Spring bars, I have the Bartons on this one now. So that's pretty good. What? I think the Barton made those. Uh, yeah, the Barton... Yeah, these are Bartons here. Not those, the things that slide into the watch itself. That's what I'm talking. Market. Barton makes them Whoa. for the Apple Watch, Jeez. if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so anyways, that orange, boy, that looks really good. Let me ask you this. Would this look good? This camo, NATO? No. Uh-uh. That would not look good. Not How about so this? The OD. Mm. Choose wisely, my son. No. It absolutely would look great. Anytime you get orange or OD together, it really makes that orange pop. But this has the black hardware on it. Eh, no one's going to notice. I mean, you can get it with frosted it if you works. want. It comes in different, but it looked great. It really would. And I have my Luminox running that. So I have the Luminox running an orange uh, NATO or Zulu. I'm sorry, OD NATO or Zulu. I forget which one. 
All right, so accuracy on this is going to be like any quartz movement. That is to say it'll be within about 10 minutes per month. If you get the quartz one. I'm kidding. It's not 10 minutes a month. It's, all quartz movements run faster. But you're saying the auto movements? Yeah, for the, they have a couple of these in auto. Poseidons? It's a, yeah, it's a Miota 9015. That's cool. It is a bit more expensive. Yeah, I mean... I, I'm kind of 50-50 now on whether I like, you know, the auto or the quartz. They're both awesome. I wanted to show you this reactor logo right here, how cool that is at the 12 o'clock position. Trying to minimize the reflection. And then the whole labeling in the watch face is fantastic. You have 12, 3, 6, and 9 big old loom markers there. I forgot to mention that. And then the rest of the, the stuff we've talked about already. 10-year battery on the quartz, so it's a high-efficiency Miyota quartz movement, not the auto, the case back says. Hopefully 10 years. Hopefully. Because I'm pretty sure I remember changing the battery. You totally did not change the battery on this because you weren't even around when I got this. I think you were gone. <laughs> yeah, it's been running. That's the original. And the dude that had it before me didn't change this. This is the original, original battery. Um, competitive options. I showed you the deep blue. Here's one on a really cool leather NATO. Look at this. This is a pure black with white highlights, deep blue, Master 1000. It is my favorite dive watch. Nothing has replaced it yet. It's big, uh, but it's not outlandish. Kettle case, 316L, 300 meter, meter, and it is a full automatic. Perfect hands on that thing. Screw down crown, 120 click sandproof bezel. And then this leather NATO strap is just kind of a fun way to swap things out. Oh, that's a Strapco one. Those Strapco straps are super top notch. And this has the same size, by the way, 20, uh, 22 millimeter lugs. And I have, uh, there's a silicone deep blue strap here. So that would actually work on this too. Black would look really good on that. And black kind of blends in with everything. Competitive options. How about the Spinnaker Helium? Now this is not a serious dive watch. It is rated to 300 meters. Uh, it is a beautiful dive watch. I have dove this exact one and I actually got some water in it. What? I don't remember if I had the crown unscrewed or what, but it did get some water in it. I had to dry it out. So that is that is what it is. Sure, it's cool though. I love the sword hands, good markings, and it came right back. This is a quartz movement. Look at the case back on this Spinnaker. I still like it. I really do, and I'd recommend it. And guys saw this in the review. They're like, review the helium. Well, here's your mini review. Go buy it before they discontinue it. Look at the scratches. So this is stainless steel. This is diving it out of the Zodiac in California. There's your number, SP5005. This is a Miyota moving on there. So there's a cup option. We don't have a ton. I don't have a ton of them. We talked about, I'm um, talking dive watches, Spinnaker Rec. Super excellent. I love that one. And then you guys have not seen this. This is the actual, um, this is called the Oceanaut Naval. Boy, that's a good looking diver. That has a silicone strap on it. Nice, big, no small face syndrome going on here. Time presentation. Look at that. It dominates the freaking Poseidon, dude. Dominates it. Nice bezel. Do you like this one? Yeah. I think you wore this, didn't you? You liked yeah. it? Yeah, I've worn it a couple days. Bezel not quite as precise as a Poseidon. Uh, and I really like the markings on this bezel, too. They're just ideal. Not bad on the Poseidon, perfect here. All, actually, every watch I'm putting on the table has really good uh, markings. A zero to 15 is your critical timing. That's what I use most frequently. And this is the OC1312, apparently. This comes in blue, black, very affordable. And then this orange, super cool. And that's all I got for competitive options that I'm gonna show you on the table. There's one more hanging out, but I ain't gonna show you. Would you buy this watch from the used market, Tactical Doodle? Yeah. Absolutely. If I could get it, 220 would be kind of my my limit. You just nope. yeah, you could put a watch uh, on eBay yeah, and see when just, it pops. Yep. Do an alert and decide what coloration you want. You know what it reminds me of? It looks like an aliens watch to me. It looks yeah. like something you'd see in the movie Aliens. Just something really big, you know, loud and proud. Industrial, it's something to whack very against the bulkheads. Yeah, titanium dive watch, 1,000 meter, 10 year battery, fantastic loom. I hope to show you that. Awesome, awesome spring uh, bar, not spring bars, but strap bars awesome. on this sucker. Recommend it if you can find it. That's a nut and fancy review on the reactor Poseidon. By the way, that's a model, I forget what it was, just a Poseidon over and out.